Okay guys, our lesson today is simplifying expressions using all of the laws of exponents that we've learned today. Before we get into it, we're going to do a quick review of the rules that we should have down pat. Product rule for when we're multiplying two terms together that have the same base. So if we have a to the m power times a to the n power, we take those two exponents and add them together. The quotient rule for when we have a fraction we have a to the m power over a to the n power. The base is the same. We subtract those exponents. If we have a power to a power, for example, if we have a raised to the m power, m as in Mary, raised to the n power, n as in Nancy, we multiply those two exponents together. And we have the zero exponent rule, my personal favorite. If you have any number raised to a zero power, your answer is always one. Don't get that confused. It's not zero. The answer is one. Also, the negative exponent rule sometimes gets a little confusing. If you have a number raised to a negative exponent, what we're doing is taking an inverse of that number. So an a to the negative one turns it into a fraction, and it becomes one over a. You can say a to the first or just leave it 1 over a. Sometimes it's a little confusing when that negative exponent actually shows up in the denominator. So if we have 1 over a to the negative 1, again, we sort of flip our fraction, and what's in the denominator becomes the numerator. So this is the same as a to the first over 1, or just a. We typically don't see the over 1, and we typically don't see the 2 the 1. Those values are already implied. Okay, so looking at our first example, how I like to approach these problems, and I don't approach every single problem the same way. It depends on what they give me in the first place. I'll regroup terms and turn them into a series of mini problems. For example, for numbers 1, 2, and 3, we're going to be using the product rule, so we have 3x squared times 5x to the fourth. I'm going to group terms that I can multiply together. 3 times 5, and then I'll put the x terms together. x squared times x to the fourth. Well, 3 times 5, when we evaluate it, gives you 15. When we have two variables with exponents, we add the exponents when we're multiplying. So this becomes x to the sixth. Final answer, 15x to the sixth. Now number two, even though it looks different, they're still asking us to perform the same operation. Um, this is multiplication, and parentheses imply multiplication. I think they put this problem in parentheses so we wouldn't get confused with the negative five and want to turn this into a subtraction problem. So following through, just like we approached problem number one, I'm going to group my terms together. So I'm going to put 3 and negative 5 beside each other, and then I'm going to have a squared times a to the sixth. A positive times a negative value, again, this is implying multiplication, will give me a negative 15. My base is the same, so a to the second times a to the sixth, I'm supposed to add those exponents, that'll give me a to the eighth. Final answer, negative 15, a to the eighth. All right, now number three. I think I'm going to like this problem, no variables. Six to the zero power, when we evaluate that, we should get one. And then four squared, when we evaluate that, that's just four times four, and that's 16. And then we take that one step further, one times 16 is 16. Now, if we made a mistake in the beginning and we said six to the zero power is zero, and we had put a zero in here, we'd get the wrong answer. So be real careful. Remember that anything raised to a zero power is one. Okay, save those U tries for tomorrow. Moving on down. Now these problems, seven, eight, and nine, are a little bit different. Sure, we're multiplying two terms together, but with these I have an extra exponent involved. And if you remember your order of operations, first we do parentheses. Well, I have parentheses here, but I don't have any operations to perform inside those parentheses. My parentheses here are indicating multiplication operations. 
but I do have an exponent. And as you know, exponents have to be taken care of before multiplication occurs. So I'm going to take care of that 3 first. I'm going to bring down my 3x cubed so I don't lose sight of it. And then I'm going to raise 4 to the third power because that 3 on the outside belongs to every single term on the inside. So I have 4 to the third times x squared to the third. I'm going to group them together, put my 3 and my 4 to the third together, bring down my x cubed, and evaluate my x squared raised to the third. When we have a power to a power, we need to multiply them. So we'll get 2 times 3 will give us an x to the sixth. One more step and we will be done. 3 times 4 to the third will give us 192. x to the third times x to the sixth, when we add those exponents, will give us x to the ninth. Final answer is 192 x to the ninth. Okay, number 8. Ah, again, I have a parentheses term raised to the second power. This too belongs to every single term inside these parentheses, so I'll worry about this x squared later. So taking care of that too, I'll have 6 squared, I'll have x to the fifth squared times x squared. When I evaluate my mini terms here, 6 squared will give me 36, x to the fifth squared, I have a power to a power, so I'll multiply them and get x to the tenth times x squared. One more step and I think we'll be done. 36 is going to stay 36. And then I have the same base. Powers get added when you're multiplying, so we'll have 36 x to the 12th. Final answer. Now if this is starting to get confusing, you may want to pause, you may want to rewind and give yourself a second to um, have all this soak in. Okay, number 9. We have negative 9 in parentheses squared, negative 9 in parentheses to the fifth. Now even though we're not talking about a variable here, my base is the same. My operation is multiplication. So what do I do with those exponents? When I'm multiplying, I add them. So this is the same as negative 9 to the seventh power. Now sometimes you'll just be asked to simplify the problem. And negative 9 to the seventh power, as long as this is in parentheses, is okay. Sometimes they will ask you to evaluate. And if they do, you have to actually plug that number into the calculator. Always use your parentheses because could come out positive, could come out negative. It's going to depend on what we're raising our powers to. In this case, since you're raising a negative number to an odd power, your answer should be negative. I believe what we get, final answer, negative 4,782,969. Okay, hopefully that wasn't too confusing. Moving on to the next page. Okay, sometimes they're going to want to assess and see do we really understand these rules. And how they're going to go about doing that is saying, here's the answer. This is part of the problem. What was the other part of the problem? And if you really know your rules, these aren't too bad. Normally when we're multiplying, we do what to exponents? We're adding exponents. So if I look at this exponent and this exponent and this exponent, that makes this one not look so bad. If you want to set up an equation, you could. Exponent of 4 plus an exponent of I don't know equals well, then that tells you your missing exponent has to be 1. So even though the problem looks a little confusing at first, the math behind it is pretty easy. Number 14. They give you the answer of 16. You have a power to a power. What do you do with exponents when you have a power to a power? You multiply them. So you have 8 times the missing value equals 16. How do you find that missing value? Well, hopefully we know our math facts, and we know that 8 times 2 is 16. Otherwise, you could sort of treat this like a variable, divide both sides by 8. Your answer will be 2. All right, so far, not too bad. Take another look at 15, however. 15, they're throwing in numbers and variables, and sometimes that gets confusing when you're talking about powers. 
So the first thing I'm trying to do is assess the situation. 2z to the I don't know, all raised to the third equals 8z to the 15th. All right, well, I'm going to try solving whatever I can. If I raise 2 to the third, 2 times 2 is 4 times 2 is 8, that already equals each other. I don't have to worry about the 2 at all. Okay, that's good news. And then I have z to the I don't know, to the third, and I know when I have a power to a power, I multiply my exponents. So I have some sort of blank times 3 gives me an answer of 15 on the other side. All right, now it's easier for me to solve. I remember that 5 times 3 equals 15. So my final answer would be 5. So when you look at these problems, might be a little overwhelming at first, but try something. They might not be that bad when you really drill down. Okay, last of the groupings. We're putting everything in here. We've got product rules, we've got power rules, we have negative exponent rules, and zero exponent rules. Our favorite. Okay, number 23. This looks a lot like the ones we had previously, except now I snuck in a negative exponent. So I'm going to regroup them like we did before. I have two. I don't have any other exponents on top of exponents, so I don't have to worry about that piece of this yet. So I'm going to regroup. I have 2 by itself because I don't have a number here. I've got x to the negative second times x squared. All right, same base. I'm multiplying. I add exponents. So I have 2 times x to the negative 2 plus 2. Negative 2 plus 2 should give me 0. So 2x to the 0, well, that can't be a final answer because I know if I evaluate x to the 0, any number raised to the 0 power is 1. So final answer, after you replace x to the 0 with 1, would be 2. So far, so good. All right, well, that one didn't look too bad. How about number 24? Phew, again, I don't have a power to a power on the outside, so I can just start grouping and doing my mini problems and hopefully make this a simpler problem. So I've put 3 and 6 together. 3 times 6. I'll put x to the negative third times x to the negative 2, and I'll put y to the negative fourth times y to the third. Okay. Now I should make mention, you have to be really neat when you're writing all these problems and you have variables and numbers all over the place, because if this 3 were too big, I might all of a sudden think that's a a coefficient or an actual number as opposed to an exponent. So make sure your exponents are tiny and raised. Make sure your numbers are big and take up the whole space. Okay, so you've got 3 times 6. That'll give you 18. You have x to the negative 3 times x to the negative 2. What are you doing with those powers? You're adding them. That will give us x to the negative 5. We'll bring our 18 down, too, so we don't forget about it. Times, we're left with y to the negative 4 times y to the third. And again, we're adding exponents. So we get negative 4 plus 3, negative 1. Not finished. You are not allowed to keep negative exponents in your final answers. So our final answer will be an 18, which will stay in the numerator. We'll have to move x to the fifth. The, to the denominator, and y to the first, also to the denominator. And you can put the one there or not. Okay, final, final. Worst type of problem, most challenging for the day. We have a product problem, but we have one of those outside powers that we have to deal with first. So my first step, do a quick rewrite. 3 to the third, x to the fourth, to the third, y to the sixth to the third, all times 7x to the third, y to the negative 5. Okay. 3 to the third, when we evaluate, gives us 27. x to the fourth to the third, we are multiplying exponents, we get x to the twelfth. And y to the sixth to the third, again, we're multiplying exponents, and 6 times 3 will give us 18 times 7 times x to the third times y to the negative 5. Group them together. We'll have 27 times 7. 
we'll have x to the 12th times x to the 3rd. We'll have y to the 18th times y to the negative 5th. Okay, from there, 27 times 7, putting that in your calculator real quick, you should get 189, x to the 12th times x to the 3rd. We're adding those exponents. We get x to the 15th, and we get y to the 18th times y to the negative 5. Again, oops, I should do it that way. We should add these exponents and get y to the 13th. Now, if any of those exponents were negative, we'd have one more step to do, but we got lucky with this one, and we're done. Okay, you may want to rewatch this video and go over certain problems. They do get kind of confusing, and tomorrow they'll get even a little bit harder. Um, we'll see you guys tomorrow.